Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse. I am your host. Let's get into it. My name is Jesse, co-founder of the Sacred Trails Society, an affiliate of Appalachian Animism. The Sacred Trails Society is a volunteer-based community effort for environmental awareness and custodianship. And I would like to invite you to participate in our efforts to keep natural wild spaces free of trash. This is as simple as picking up a gum wrapper, soda can, or any other kind of non-biodegradable waste that you find and disposing of it in a responsible manner while you are out enjoying time in your local community park, wildlife spaces, trails, waterways, parks, and greenways. Natural wild spaces are in a constant decline as the push to develop land increases. Therefore, the opportunity to share in enjoying them is dwindling, giving us all the more reason to take care of them, doing what we can to maintain them. So I would like to invite you to follow our social media pages on Facebook and Instagram. And if you want to participate in the mission of the Sacred Trail Society, please feel free to share your efforts with and inspire the community on social media yourselves by using the hashtag Sacred Trail Society. To learn more, visit AppalachianAnimism.com slash Sacred Trail Society. Thank you all so much. Hail and hello. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Thank you so much for coming back with me this week. Got a fun episode uh, lined up this week to talk about one of our uh, more principal deities, one of the more major of, uh, of the gods. You've got your major gods, you've got your minor gods, you've got your <clears throat> whites and Vatir and ancestors and all that. Here in Heathen Rain, we've uh, we're going to be talking today about uh, Thor. It is, uh, uh, you know, Thor's day. <laughs> uh, if you're listening to this during the premiere when it airs first, uh, every Thursday, every Thursday morning, these episodes do air. So here we are on Thor's day. We're going to be talking about Thor, but we're not just going to be talking about Thor you know, because there's so much to talk about with him. Um, there's a lot of uh, information, um, you know, stories, lower mythology, um, archaeological, historical stuff about this guy. Um, but we're not just going to be talking about him. We're going to be talking about his other half, which we uh, hear very little about, his wife, Sif. Um, so thanks for tuning in today. Like I said, be sure to uh, follow this podcast. Give the video a like if you're watching this on YouTube. Share it around with your heathen and pagan friends. Help bring in some more listeners, watchers, uh, viewers, supporters. Uh, there's all kinds of ways that you can support this podcast if you head over to the description or show notes of the podcast there's a link tree link and if you click on that it's going to be your one-stop shop uh for you to go to to find all of my social media platforms the midgard musings uh, apparel store um patreon all kinds of stuff there so please be sure to, to check that out and see if there's anything in there that fits uh for you to uh support what i do here um so again we are here today to talk about thor and sif uh, before I do get started and, uh, you know, in, into this discussion, <clears throat> I would just like to mention a couple of upcoming events here in the Middle Tennessee area um, that I am uh, uh, associated with or going to be a part of, some in-person events. Um, here in, well, actually, let me back up. I'm going to start with, it is the weekend of Sigurbloat, uh, for all of you that, that uh, observe your heathenry in a more historically accurate fashion, if you're a Reconstructionist at all, um, or, or lean towards the Reconstruction side of things, of, of, of when you observe the Holy Tides. Uh, we are in, right now, the, the start of the Sigurbloat, Victory Month, or the Victory uh, Bloat for Victory. And my tribe is going to be celebrating our Sigurbloat uh, here in just a couple of days, so I'm looking very 
much forward to spending time with my uh, my extended family, and we're going to be grilling out, we're going to be cooking, and um, you know, having a, a private you know ritual to to celebrate our victories in. And so, good cigar bloats, blessed cigar bloats, um, however you want to call it, uh, to all of you fine folks out here that that do. Uh, find yourselves observing it in this way. And I hope you have good weather and I hope you have good fortune. And I hope that you are able to um, acknowledge and celebrate your victories as well, no matter how big or small they might be. Um, <clears throat> so moving moving past that, the, the next big uh, thing that I wanted to announce is that, and all this information, by the way, uh, if, it's, if it's public, you know, if I'm going to be doing any sort of uh, public appearances anywhere in the middle tennessee area it's going to be linked in the show notes and description of the of this podcast so um <clears throat> here in a couple of weeks more than a couple actually uh second week of may i think it is it's um let me just look at my calendar here because i'm terrible yeah may may 6th um may 6th which is a a uh a saturday is here in murfreesboro uh, myself, um, my wife, uh, Greg from the Raven Moon Hearth, Kindred, um, him, uh, so Greg and, and our tribes, uh, Gothi, call him Ulf. Uh, he, uh, them two are guys, th them two guys are, are pairing up to host a, um, a public event at one of the parks. I believe it's going to be at Case and Trailhead here in Murfreesboro. Um, going to set up, you know, a, a at, at one of the pavilions, and uh, it's going to be—I believe they're calling it um, Fim. Uh, what is it? Uh, Fimbultir, Feast of Fimbultir, or something. It's—it's it's a feast for dedicated to Odin. Um, so we're going to have a lot of discussion around Odin. Um, not sure all what else. I think there might be some, um, you know, uh, food that that we're going to have. Um, at least to some degree, there's there's an offering that we're going to. I think plan for to to give to Odin, um, but it's going to be here in Murfreesboro. It's going to be at the Case and Trailhead. So the information for that's going to be linked down uh, in your podcast show notes or description here. Uh, so check that out if you're close in proximity, want to come out and, and say hi to to some local he heathens, local pagans, talk about Odin. Uh, come on out, say hi, and check out those details. The next one after that is going to be actually the following weekend. Um, May 11th, 12th, and, or, sorry, May 12th, 13th, and 14th, if I am, yeah, uh, ca uh, accounting for it correctly. So May, um, <clears throat> May 12th, uh, May, yeah, May 12th through 14th, um, that is going to be the Feast of the Fallen. So it's the weekend after the, the, the Odin thing that I just mentioned. That's going to be a Raven Moon Hearth event. My wife and I will be there as well. We're actually going to be spending uh, the weekend camping, and we're going to be doing some vending. My wife's got some really nice handmade uh, or handcrafted items. She's been doing a lot of wood burning here lately. Um, so please, if you're in the area, uh, it, again, the event details are going to be linked down there. But it's a it's a weekend long, so Friday, Saturday, and then they shut everything down uh, around lunchtime on Sunday. But it's a it's a you know a weekend a long weekend uh, camping event, so you can come and set up a tent on the property there, and this is a Raven Moon Hearth hosted event. So there will be games, there will be uh, workshops, there will be vendors, there will be classes, there will be games, there will be ritual. Um, I've never been to one of the Feast of the Fallen uh, events, but this is a yearly recurring thing that they have every year uh, around this time. And I said, as I recall, uh, this is kind of like their ushering in of, of summer. So... And, and also to commemorate and remember fondly uh, those uh, loved ones who have, who have passed on that are, um, that have either, you know, uh, fallen in battle or um, that sort of thing. So we'll be there for that too. Hope you guys, if you're in the area, want to come out and check that out. So uh, details for that are in the description and show notes. So now that we've got all of that fine stuff out of the way, I, I wanted to... Um, talk about uh, <clears throat> Thor and, and, and Sif today because, I don't know, I got to thinking about us as people now and, and how, you know, we, we, we share existence with so many 
people in so many different ways, you know, whether it's friends, partners, uh, spouses, um, roommates, I mean, just all sorts of things. And, um, you know, we, we, we share existence with people. And I, and I wanted to focus specifically on the, uh, the relationship or the, or the dynamic of, of, of couples, you know, um, gender and all that aside, like I'm not saying it's, you know, man, wife, husband, wife, whatever, it's, it's whoever and however people want to classify or, or identify, I should say themselves as is, is, is perfectly fine. But I'm, I'm talking specifically about like the relationship between, you know, two people who love each other. And, and I wanted to look at the, uh, the ways that, that Thor and, and Sif, um, are, are described at least from what we know in the lore and and stuff and and that's th therein lies the challenge um because with thor as i mentioned earlier in, in, in the introduction you know we've got a lot of stories a lot of information that is documented about thor's mannerisms his characteristics what he's known for um and virtually nothing uh, of the same or similar way uh, that we have of his wife of sif and uh, I don't know. I got to thinking. You know, the 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 the, the way that that married couples, the way that couples coexist and, and cohabitate, and and how it can be beneficial, or how to make it beneficial when you know you you meet somebody for the first time and you you get to know them and they get to know you, and next thing you know, there's this um, contract that's that's uh, established, as it were, a social contract or of of spending the rest of your life you know, together with that person and how two different people, you know, that can be uh, opposites of one another can still find a peaceful and amicable and even beneficial lifestyle. And um, I know a lot of us out here, you know, myself included, have are either, you know, in committed relationships or have been in, in relationships in the past um, that you might consider, you know, long-term marriages, uh, domestic partnerships, what have you, that, uh, you know, you, you, you enter into them thinking that it's the long-term, you know. Um, I've, I've made mistakes in my past thinking of the, of the same thing, and, and you know, I, I've, I've noticed that, you know, Thor and Sif, you know, like, they, they we, we know a lot about Thor, we know his characteristics, we know very little about Sif, but we can probably, I think a lot of us maybe would, uh, come to some sort of agreement that, um, you know, what what is not preserved about anything to do with Sif? You know, the, the, the most that we know from the lore is she is Thor's wife and that her hair is um, made of gold or it is golden. There's, there's references throughout some of the, um, throughout some of the, poems that uh, suggest her hair is golden, right, or, or that it's made of gold. As a matter of fact, the, 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 the best known or the, really the, the one of the only known um, stories that we have about Sif is when Loki shaves her hair off. And, in, you know, this enrages Thor to the point that, you know, Thor demands that Loki makes this right, that he, that he does something to, to get her hair back. You know, because this is what she is known for. This is her, 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 uh, what do you call it? Her, uh, characteristic, you know, it's, it's, it's her aesthetic. Um, and now that it's gone, it's, you know, this is a problem. And what's, what's really interesting, if you think about it, is that, um, you know, up to the point in the story, up to the, up to the point of Sif losing her hair, thanks to Loki's you know, <clears throat> mischievous ways or whatever, you know, or what have you. Up until that point, you know, Thor didn't have his hammer. Um, Odin didn't have his spear or his ring, Draupnir, uh, or, or Gungnir. You know, Thor didn't have Mjolnir. Um, Freyr didn't have his boar or his ship, you know, you know the, the, the golden bristle, Gurlin or or, or Skithbladnir, the, the, the ship that is magical that that is uh, capable of, of being folded and, and fitting into his pocket you know none of these magical items um are were were procured up until 
Sif's hair was was stolen from her because when when Thor was was mad about this and and demanded that Loki make this right, his solution was he would go to the dwarves and the dwarves would make a new set of hair made of actual gold and that you know that it would never it would it would always be golden uh, or something like that. And then in addition to Sif's new golden hair that that was crafted and made by the dwarves, there was Gungnir, you know, Odin's spear, there was Draupnir, his ring, there was the the other things that I mentioned, Thor's hammer, Mjolnir, right? So what's what's interesting to say if it is or what's interesting to think is that if it hadn't been for Sif, you know, this this very symbol that that I wear around my neck, you know, Thor's hammer, the, the symbol that so many Norse pagans um, wear as a representation of our faith um, wouldn't have come into existence, wouldn't be in existence had it not been for this mishap or the, or this thing that happened and, and if Sif wasn't involved, you know? So we almost owe it to Sif to have these things because had it not been for what happened to her, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be here or they wouldn't be in existence. Um, and that, 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 that's what kind of got me thinking about wanting to talk about this is, you know, because Thor is this brash, brave, strong, courageous, you know, fiery, uh, figure who is, who is, you know, takes no, you know, it, it, it's, it's act first, ask questions later when it comes to Thor. He doesn't really have the, he's not known for the wit you know, or, or, or thinking things through. It's it's smash, <laughs> crush, destroy, and 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 you know it's better to. I feel like Thor would be one of those uh, folks who you know it's it's better to ask forgiveness than just to ask for permission. You know, it's better to get forgiveness than to ask for permission. It's better to do something now and then say, "Up, oh, my bad." Later on, than to try to weigh it out and figure it out and ask, "Is this okay?" So he's action driven, you know. And um, we see this many times throughout the lore. And again, with Sif, we don't see much of anything. We, we, we know about this story. We hear that possibly she's a bit unfaithful to Thor. And that's, that's really, you know, it, it, we can't really confirm anything like that, at least from the stories. But it's like, it's implied, you know. Loki's throwing insults all around in Aegir's Hall in, in, in the poem Lokasena and, and, and makes a passing comment about Sif. And, and then in Harbard's the Oath, where Harbard and Thor um, are exchanging insults, one of, of, of Harbard's insults to Thor is, you know, that he doesn't think that, uh, you know, he can keep track of his, of his wife because she's probably humping somebody else or whatever he says, right? It's, it's all insults that are being cast around and it's pretty reckless. You know, so we don't, <clears throat> we can't really, you know, <laughs> use that as, as a thing to say, yeah, she's probably screwing around on Thor while he's out protecting Midgard and slaying giants or Jotun and doing whatever the other things that, that, that Thor does. Um, so I wouldn't really think that. As a matter of fact, I think that it's, it's, it's the complete office, opposite. Um, and I think that the opposite of Thor is calm, compassion, love, nurturing, pause, right, thinking things through, being this, like, the calm amongst this storm that Thor is. He is he is this fiery, you know, just brute energy, brute strength, and, and, and full of vigor. And too much of that is, you know, too chaotic. It's, it's too destructive. It's, there needs to be that balance. And that's why I was thinking about, like, when it comes to us in, as, in, in modern times, and just us as people, in general, right? When we look to <clears throat> become companions with someone on a long-term basis and we have this, this, this bond with these people, you know, from, from my past experiences, the, the bond that has lasted the longest and that has been the best for me has been the bond with someone who is not as same as me, that does not contain the same degree of, or the same like characteristics. You know, they are complementary opposites to me, you know, or they, they, they are, she is my wife now, Vanessa, she is my complementary opposite. And that's how I feel with Thor and Sif. Um, it's an example to look towards as, as it were, you know, I mean, these are our, our gods. These are our sacred 
figures. These are our, our the, the, the divine that we choose to, to worship and venerate in our, in our, in our practices, in our faith, right? And to look to them as examples at times, I feel, is, is the way that our ancient ancestors may have uh, looked at them as well. You know, they, 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 they look to them as um, something greater and better and bigger than they are as far as humanity, right? They are, they are greater than us. I, I firmly believe it is, it is my personal practice that the gods are greater than us. They are, we are not peers. We are not equal to them. The lore, the mythology right contains accounts of times when the gods display very human characteristics human like characteristics and they do things and they go through things that are relatable to us and that's again i feel like part of the religiosity of it all is is when these when these stories started to get documented down which as we all know happened during a time when christianity was spreading so the bias there that that is 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 present. You know, we got to keep that into consideration. But I'm just saying, right? Like we we, I'm I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one that when uh, when times are rough or when when you feel like you need strength, you might find yourself appealing or wanting to appeal to Thor and and offer to Thor and and, and gift to Thor or sacrifice to Thor for the strength, for the bravery, for the courage, for the tenacity. For that, that just, you know, brute, unapologetic force of nature to, to get through things. Um, but then at the same time, think of what the, 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 the opposite of that would be and what the complementary opposite of that would be. You can't just be all gung-ho all the time. You need that calm. You need that... You know, I can almost imagine, and again, my, pure UPG, right? But, you know, you get to thinking when you read these stories and you, you know, kind of come up with stuff on, on your own to fill in the blanks. Like, you know, you imagine, right? Sif's there just minding their own business, probably is asleep, you know. And here comes Loki <laughs> with, a, with, a, with scissors or, or a knife or whatever, like cuts all her hair off. She wakes up, right? Freaks out probably like, oh, my God, right? Like, it's, my hair is gone. This is crazy. And then Thor loses his loses his shit because that's my wife, you bastard, right? And, and he comes to her defense and, and to defend her honor. And I can almost picture right at that moment that, you know, Sif was like, Thor, <laughs> baby, T take it down a notch, right? Try to, try to settle that storm a little bit. Let him do his thing. Let him be what he needs to be in that moment, but, but be that, that, that favorable balance out of it all. And um, I have... I have experienced that myself in my own life, you know, um, not to get very specific on anything, but I, I'll, I'll just give you guys like an example of things that have been happening recently for me where I have been very much Thor-like. I have been very direct, very bold, very brash, very unapologetic in the way that I approach things or have approached things. And my, my, my complimentary opposite, you know, my wife, she has been the one to settle that storm. She's been the one to be like, look, you need to not be that way. Stop being you for a minute. Stop being the way you are. Dial it back. And, 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 and she's been, been the one to kind, of, to kind of give me that much needed counsel, that, that calmness, you know, that, that let's, let's think about things here for a minute. You know, this isn't the time to be Thor-like. This is not the time to be brash. This is the time to be tactical. This is the time to be thoughtful. This is the time to be wise and, and, and have your wits about you, you know? And when we find ourselves in a position, um, where the, the storm is, is raging and that all we want to do is just ride through that storm and, 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 let the storm carry us through it and just be reckless. There's no telling what what damage can can be left in your wake, you know. Um, and so I feel like when it's necessary, yes, you know, there, there's 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 all of that necessi necessity to take action without really taking a consideration of the of the consequence. You know, it's it's the the, the risk is. Uh, you know, the risk is worth taking. Um, 
in, in those conditions. But at times we, we, we need that complementary opposite of ourselves. And, and this could go for a lot of things, you know, maybe uh, it, it is roles were reversed, right? Maybe you're the type of person or maybe person is, is more passive and doesn't have that, uh, that necessary rage, that necessary fire. And then the complementary opposite of that person is to be the catalyst to spark what needs to be done or to provide that, uh, that, that attitude, that behavior, those mannerisms, those characteristics when it's needed. You know, we can't be all things all the time. Individuals, right? I mean, uh, <clears throat> and, 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 and I'm talking right now, of course, about, you know, situations or, or, or relationships that, that mirror what we're seeing in, in, the, in the mythology, you know, a man and his wife or, or, or a married couple. Um, but I think the, the, the spirit of the message is, is that it doesn't, it's, it's not restricted to just that, right? I think I've had enough experiences myself that I think um, close friends can be complementary opposites for one another. You know, you have, I have, uh, still have, have, you know, a friend who is very much like me. And when the two of us get together, when the two of us start talking, it's almost like, you know, watch out because you've got these, <laughs> you know, we're both Scorpios, we're both double Scorpios, you know, we, we, we've got very similar characteristics that um, when we talk to one another, we relate to one another incredibly well because the same things that, you know, similar things irritate the both of us in the same way. And oddly enough, we've had very similar um, experiences throughout our lives at different points in time, but but similar enough um, that we can strongly relate. And um, you know, you get the two of us on on a set on a thing, then it's it's literally, you know, the hammers is 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 just swinging, and there's no stopping it. You know, so you gotta, <clears throat> and then I have other friends that have that have been very much this this cooling and this grounding sort of um presence for me you know that, that that have been able to in a in a similar way but not in the exact same way as 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 what my wife does for me is is to pull me back from that moment of rage or that moment of reckless abandon that you might find myself in and, and be that voice of reason you know that 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 sort of that uh, friendly reminder of you know this isn't uh this isn't the uh this isn't the thunderdome here you know it's it's or what's that other one right uh two men enter one man leaves and this isn't it's not like that this is this is real life and and, and real life sometimes requires reasoning logic logical thinking level-headedness you know and that's what i feel with what little we know about Sif from the mythology or from the, from many sources, again, it's almost like she's been written off or written out of the stories. We've we've got you know not more than just a few references, mostly from from Snorri's um, Eddic stuff, right? I think she's mentioned, of course, again, Locusena, so the poetic Edda, um, uh. A, a a passing mention of her in, in Harbard's Leo. So again, another poem from the Poetic Edda. Skull Scrippa Mall, I believe, she's referred to in there or or, or given uh, a mention to in there. So, but but again, we don't we don't see any like information historically speaking that Sif was a major or minor deity who was worshipped by. Um, you know, uh, Scandinavians or, or Germanic people in general, um, at least not yet. We haven't found that yet. There's no, there's no such, uh, information that we have available to us to know that. Um, but it makes you wonder, you know, it makes you wonder if, um, if those people who we know, you know, Thor being the everyman God, the common man's God, you know, the, 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 the God of the people sort of thing, you know, the, the, the one who, is the protector of Midgard and who has, you know, places named after him that has uh, archaeological finds of, of statues, of, of, of god poles, of idols, of things that were created to commemorate him and tend to have um, a place uh, of worship for him. 
we know that Thor was venerated. So it, 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 it's almost like you can't help but ignore the fact that, well, if, his, if he was venerated and worshipped, then there certainly uh, wouldn't surprise me to, to think that there were certain maybe cults of Thor or certain uh, regional practices that included his wife. And I've heard of some people who um, have a, a focus on Sif in their personal practices and in their individual cultic or personal practices that um, they regard Sif as a goddess of the hearth or, or, or a goddess who is sort of responsible for the protection of the hearth and to keep the hearth and the home safe, just as Thor is a protector of the wide world and the, and the protector of Midgard, um, while he's out protecting outside, Sif is his complementary opposite that protects inside and that protects the hearth and the home. And so I've heard of, of some people that, um, you know, make offerings to Sif when peace in the home is needed. Or, or peace and, and prosperity and love and care and protection of the home is being is looking to be invoked, right? Um, so it's kind of some neat things to think about. You know, like I've never, as, as much of a Thorsman as I've been in most of my heathen ways or my, my pagan practices, I've... Um, you know, it's not right, wrong, or indifferent. I've just, I've never put too much thought up until recently about the significance or the importance or the place of Sif in Thor's, you know, in, in venerating Thor and worshiping Thor or doing anything with Thor. It's always kind of like Sif gets forgotten. Sif gets disregarded in, in many of the ways because like here he's out doing his whole thing. And then, well, what about, what about the golden haired wife of Thor who, who, you know, had it not been for her, Thor wouldn't have the hammer that he uses to protect mankind. Had it not been for Sif, you know, the All-Father wouldn't have his spear that never misses its mark. It wouldn't have the ring Draupnir. Freyr wouldn't have Gullenbursti or, or, or uh, Skad, uh, Skad blit, blit, blah, the, the ship. <laughs> Skidbladnir. That one. The, the ship, you know, that, that uh, he sails uh, or will be sailing into... Uh, when he, when he when he faces Surt and, and sails through Ragnarok, and it's uh you know none of those things would exist had it had not been for Sif. You know, so I uh, it's 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 funny that we talk about stuff like this, you know, uh, on a Thor's day, on on a on a Thursday, and and the subject matter is Thor, and and I personally am a bit more inclined to not forget about Sif, you know. For whatever reason, her name was minimal, um, and, and, and her mentions are very, very spar sparse uh, throughout the sources that we have available to us now. For whatever reason that is, uh, maybe now is a time to bring back what little there is and, and try to, again, you know, reconstructing things. is, is It's such, a, such an interesting position to find oneself in, you know, especially when you can't back things up by historical evidence and know and, and have a baseline of where to start. So you're really essentially starting from scratch. You know, you're taking like little hints or little clues, little, you know, breadcrumbs that you followed here and there, and then, and then kind of just, you know, fishing around in the dark here, you know, trying to make sense of something. And is it worth making sense for? I don't know. Maybe not for everybody. But again, this is what we ramble on about. This is what we find ourselves uh, talking about and and hopefully, you know, sparking some some healthy discussion and healthy conversation about. Um, I personally would love to know more about the role of Sif. Um, I've, I've told uh, a rendition of Thrymskvida, which is the story of when Thor loses his hammer and he has to dress up as um, Freya to disguise, to be disguised as Freya, right? To, 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 to win his hammer back. And knowing this whole thing about, you know, or, or thinking about this whole thing of, of Sif having her hair cut off by Loki and then that being the thing that gets his 
Hammer created. I can, I can, like, can you imagine, like, let's just, like, put ourselves in the frame of mind for a minute of Thor and Sif, you know? Um, Thor is, 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 he just got back from battling Jotun, uh, you know, and then protecting Midgard. It was, it was a rough, it was like, it was on a Friday, <laughs> you know, and he's like, oh my God, it's, you know, oh my me, right? <laughs> he's, he's all wore out from the, from the escapades. And, you know, Sif is in there and she, she pours him a fresh tankard of ale, you know, because that's what we like to associate Thor with is, is revelry and drinking and ale and he's, he's, or mead or whatever. Like he's, let's say he's got both because Sif's that, she's that great wife. She knows, hey, if he doesn't want some ale, he wants some mead. So let's get them both, you know. And her hair is, is all beautiful and golden because at this point um, he's, you know, her, her hair has been replaced by the, by the gift that, Loki, um, you know, offered or, or, or provided. But that's still in the back of her mind, right? She's like, that's son of a bitch. So anyway, you know, Thor gets back from his, from his fighting of the, of Jotun, and he's, he, he drinks all of his ale and drinks all the mead, and he's feeling really good and has himself a, a really good night. And then he goes to bed, and Sif goes to bed with him, and he wakes up the next day, and where's Mjolnir? It's gone. Uh-oh, right? And uh, you can imagine, like, Sif being like, oh, my God. You know, dude, I look what I had to lose for you to even get that thing. And now you get drunk and, and pass out, and you can't even remember where you put your hammer. Like, can you, like, <laughs> the frustration of a wife towards her husband that does dumb stuff, right? I've been in that position more times than I can count. And it's like, I can I can see that being an exchange that would happen. And he's over here like... You know, my head, it feels like, uh, you know, uh, I, I feel like I've been hitting the head with a hammer and then Sif's over there like, well, it ain't Mjolnir because where is that? Who knows? It not you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> all of this stuff. And, you know, it's fun to get into that mentality or get into that, like, train of thought and, and, and putting things in, like, a very relatable scenario, right, that Sif's over here just going, man, I can't believe that I, I had my head shaved and new hair made of gold given to me just for you to lose the hammer that you got because of all that at the beginning. Like, I went through all that just for this, you know? And I'm sure, you know, Thor's raging mad. Like, he's pissed. He's, he's turning the house upside down trying to find the thing. And Sif's over here like, we're going to find it. We're going to figure this out. I'm not happy about it either, but you need to chill out, bro. Like, you need you need to you need calm your tits. <laughs> I don't know. That's just that's the way I think of it, and and you know maybe you think it uh, think it or think of it a little bit differently than I do, but that's that's where I went with it, and that's where I've I've found myself thinking is that she is the complementary opposite of Thor. She is everything strong that is needed in a level headed, rationally thinking, logically approaching sort of way. You know, she's not like passive in the sense of being weak she is just what what is needed at the home what is needed at the hearth level what is needed within is we got to keep this together we got to we, we we can't lose our cool at this level we got to keep it together man you know and that's what that's what my complimentary opposite has been for all for our marriage you know i'm i'm, I'm approaching now here in a few in a few short weeks you know I'm going to be approaching, what is it, uh, six years of marriage with my wife. You know, we've been together for eight. And, um, you know, thinking back and, and recalling everything that we've gone through. And, and, and sometimes, you know, sometimes the roles get reversed. You know, sometimes she's the more Thor-like one, and I got to be the one that is is not Thor-like, because again, you get those two powerhouse energies rolling, and it's, it's, it's this unstoppable force, you know, and uh, so sometimes those roles need to be reversed, and that's what, I think, that's what a marriage is, that's what any domestic partnership is, that's what any relationship is, that you, when you coexist with someone to that degree, and in that, and in that manner, you know, you gotta be flexible, and yes, you're going to be a, a certain 
one in the in 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 the relationship, right? You're going to maintain or, or carry a certain responsibilities and, and positions in the relationship, and so is the other person. But then sometimes, sometimes you know things get flipped around, and sometimes you gotta you gotta be flexible. But um, I don't know. I, I wanted to, to 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 mention it because you know complementary opposites. I think are the key. You get you get someone that's just too much like you, or, or too much like. Again, not the same. That's not the same for everybody. I'm not saying that you know if you are happy with someone and they're exactly like you, or you guys like the same things, or you're always talking about the same stuff, you have the same interests, whatever. That it's that it's destined for failure. You're not saying that at all. I'm just saying that just because you're different doesn't mean that it's like. You're clashing all the time because you know how, like, when you flip magnets and the, and the, the polar opposites come together, there, there's no, there's no, uh, or the, 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 the they're, they're too much alike. You got the two positives, the two negatives, right? It's, it's that bouncing. They're, they're too similar. You need that opposite. You need that positive, that negative. You need that yin. You need that yang. You know, in my in my history and, and from my experience, you know, when when people are too much alike, and you've got too much in, in common doesn't doesn't play out well. It, it may be cool for a little while and it may feel like it's all right, but then eventually it just it crumbles. It's weird how that works. So but yeah, um there it is. There's there's this week's discussion. There's this week's ramblings. And I'm in I'm I'm curious to know what it is about this topic that 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 strikes home for you you know do you think that it's been more beneficial to have those opposites that attract or the complementary opposite scenario or do you think that it's doesn't really matter or that it's you know case by case i'd love to hear what your thoughts are so down in the comments or over in the email or whatever it is you know however you want to voice your thoughts or your opinions please please do so you can comment down below on this video you can uh, email the podcast. It's uh, MidgardMusingsTN at gmail.com. You can call in 615-671-9832. You can uh, message me on, on any one of my social medias, except for Instagram. I do not uh, see those. So if you want to you know, DM me on Twitter, you can at me on Twitter. You can DM me on Facebook. Um, whatever. If you like maybe doing a a podcast discussion on this yourself. You want to come on here and talk about some things. You have an idea. Maybe you'd like to get um, on the podcast with us. Again, it's just me for the most part, most of the time. So I'd love to wrap with some people about things. And and you know the 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 invitation is open. Just you know send me an email. That's the best way of inquiring about it. And we can work on uh, details as far as that goes. But yeah, it would be great. So anxious to hear what you all think about this and uh, how it fits into your practices if you're so willing to to share um, so i hope you all did enjoy this week's episode um if you did be sure to give it a like be sure to give it a thumbs up uh upvote whatever the platform is that you're on you know calls for um and yeah share it around you know do all the things appease the algorithm gods as we like to say um and until we talk again May the gods continue to notice you, and may your ancestors smile upon you. See you next time.